Welcome to part 5 of the Ray Marching Shader in Unity tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we've calculated the normals of the distance field and used that to create a Lambertian lighting. In this part I will show you how to render the distance field in the scene view. By using the depth buffer of the camera we can combine ray marching with mesh objects and freely rotate around the ray marching scene in Unity. Creating these free tutorials takes a lot of time and effort and I couldn't have created these without the support of all the amazing patrons at my Patreon. If you find the contents of my tutorials helpful, consider supporting me at Patreon. In doing so, you not only support me creating these, but you get access to the source files, exclusive tutorials and extra content. Special thanks to MR, Andrew LeBoy, Devin the Dude, Derek Vechter and Patrick Nugent. At this point we visualize the ray marching shader in the game view. The goal in this part is to be able to view the ray marching in the scene view. We can then rotate around the scene as we would be able to with any standard game object. In the description of this video, or by following the link that should pop up now, you can find a link to download the scene view filter script. This script will apply the ray marching shader to the scene view camera in the Unity editor. The scene view filter script will apply the configurations of any script that inherits from the scene view filter. So let's change that in the ray march camera script. Let's scroll to the top. And instead of inheriting from the mono behavior, we're going to inherit from the scene view filter. Now let's have a look at the unrender image. At this point, we output the ray directions as colors when a ray doesn't hit the distance field. Instead of showing those colors, we want to show the Unity skybox and all mesh objects in the scene. To do this, we need to assign the main text of the shader to the current source. Then we can apply the ray marching shader and return the combination of both. So underneath the render texture active, we're going to type a new line and we're going to talk to the ray march material and we're going to set a texture. And the texture we're going to set is the main text. And we're going to set this to the source. Let's save this script and go to the ray march shader. At the top, we see the main text property that is now filled with the current scene view. We need to assign the colors of this main text in the frag so we can blend between the ray marching results and the unity scene. So let's scroll down to the frag. Let's create a new fixed tree that will hold the colors of the main text. So we're going to type fixed three and we'll call this call for color. And that is going to be a text 2D of the main text. And we're going to get the I dot UV. Now to know whether we've hit the distance field or not and either show the ray march shader or the main text colors, we will be using the W value of the returning result. When there is a hit, we set here the alpha component to 1, as you can see here. For the rays that miss, we need to set the value to 0. So let's scroll up a little bit and here in the environment we're setting this to the ray direction and 1 and we're going to set this to 0. Now we need a smart way of either returning the fixed recall or the result of the ray marching. So let's scroll down to the frag and instead of returning the result we're going to do something else. We need to return a fixed 4 so let's type a fixed 4 and the fourth value of the fixed 4 will be 1.0 and now we need to blend the RGB values. So in front of the comma here we're going to do that. So let's first get the colors of the fixed three call. So we'll write call. And we're going to multiply this by between parentheses. One minus the result dot W. So if the distance field has hit something, the result of W will be one. So one minus one is zero. So the color multiplied by zero will be zero. Now in that case, we do want to return the result of the X, Y, and Z values. So we're going to do a plus and we're going to add the result dot X, Y, Z values multiplied by the result dot W. Now let's save the shader and go back to Unity. Back in Unity, you might not see the sphere appearing in the scene view as I had to reload the scene to get it to work. So let's do that now. So let's go to File, New Scene, 
gonna go to the camera gonna drag and drop the ray march camera onto the camera let's select the shader put it there the directional light gonna set the max distance to 200 and increase the sphere size let's set it to 3 so now we see the ray marching result in the scene view and we can rotate around it very cool right Another thing you might notice is that the sphere is semi-transparent and that is because we multiplied the alpha channel by the light as well. So let's change that by going over to the Raymart shader. If we look here at the result we see that we've multiplied the fixed 4 by the light. So to fix this we're going to instead of saying 111 we're going to call this a fixed 3 of 111. And we're going to multiply that by the light. Now let's remove this. And now only the RGB channels are multiplied by the light. And we get an output value of 1. So let's save that. And if we go back to Unity. We can now see that it's opaque. Let's move on to the next issue. And that appears when we add mesh to the scene. So let's go to game object. 3D game object. And we're going to select the cube. Now let's set the cube to the center, 0, 0, 0. I'm going to increase the scale to 3. Now let's place it a little bit outside of the sphere of the ray marching shader. Now we can see the problem that happens. The ray marching shader just draws on top of the scene and doesn't take into account the positions of the mesh. We need to create a system in which the shader knows if there is a mesh in front of the distance field and output the mesh object there. We can do this by using the camera depth texture which holds information on how far mesh objects are from the camera. If we can calculate that distance value we can use that in our ray marching and stop marching when we hit the camera depth texture value. So let's open up the ray march shader. Let's scroll to the top. So let's create a new line and we're going to type a uniform sampler 2D and we're going to call this the camera capital and capital depth and capital texture, the camera depth texture. Now we need to calculate the depth of the depth texture as a float in the frag. So let's scroll down to the frag and we're going to create a new float and we'll call this depth. And that is going to be the linear eye depth of the camera depth texture. So let's say texture 2D of the camera depth texture of its position i dot uv dot its r component. If you want more information on the linear eye depth, you can find this in the manual. Now as we're going to apply this for our rays, we need to multiply this depth by the length of ray. So we'll say depth multiply is by the length of the in dot ray. Now we need to use this depth value in the ray marching. So let's scroll to the ray marching and we're going to add a float and call this depth. Now let's assign this depth to the ray marching. So comma and we're going to send depth to this function. Now let's go back to the ray marching and now where we're checking the distance traveled so if the distance traveled is higher than the max distance we want to draw the environment but we're also going to check on the depth. So let's create an OR statement and we'll say that if t is higher than or equal to the depth. Now with that in place let's save the shader and go back to unity. You can now see that the mesh cube and the distance field are culled by each other. This allows for you to build some amazing scenes with ray marching and combine them with your usual workflow in the unity scene. At this point we simply show a sphere in the distance field but in the next part I will show you how to build some amazing 3D structures using several different sign distance field functions. Thank you for following this part. If you found this tutorial helpful, feel free to share this video with your peers. To stay updated to new released parts, subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Happy coding!